and welcome to Conversations in the Cloud, where we talk to public Londoners all about the greatest city on earth. We are here at the IFS Cloud Cable Car. Don't forget, if you're watching, make yourselves known, get involved with in the conversation, hit us up in the chat or in the comments. Now, here at the IFS Cable Car, you will be taking it, or we will be taking it right now, from North Greenwich Peninsula, by the O2, all the way over to Royal Docks, over by the XL. It's 90 metres high, above the Thames, but not scared of price, and plus 15 million people have done this, so you've got no excuse at all. Well, 15 million and two now, because I am going to be joined by a really special guest, one of London's most exciting artists. He's a rapper, he's a writer, he's a broadcaster, he's an author. Is he anything else? Oh yeah, he's appeared as a football pundit on TV as well, so he knows a thing or two. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Governor B to the occasion! Yeah, yeah, yeah. Woo! What's up, Governor? Nice to see you. That was very smooth, by the way. Yeah, well, that's how we did it, you know what I mean? That's how we did it. How are things? Are you well, first off? I'm well, man. Doing good. Um, yeah, I'm great. Just had a baby a few weeks ago. Yeah? So I'm not getting much sleep, but on the whole, oh, you're, looking, you're not looking too tight. The uh, bags are looking good so thank far. The skincare you, routine on point. <laughs> <laughs> hey, look, I don't think you've ever probably done an interview in a cable car before, right? No, nah, this is definitely a first. I'm not going to lie. Okay, a first time for me as well. So um, <laughs> we'll see how this one goes. Actually, to be fair, you are a, an East Londoner born and bred, really, aren't you? Yeah, I grew up in Custom House, mm -hmm. um, E16. Went to school there. Um, a bit later on, moved out, and now I live in Greenwich. So Great. It's quite handy actually, because this goes from Greenwich to Custom House. Yeah. So I'm like, yeah, man. So your work day started at home and yeah. will end at home as well. It will, Nice man. and easy for you. This is very nicely decorated. Don't it's you beautiful think? in here, isn't it? I, I would actually just like to get to know just how East London you are. What football team? West Ham Irons! Oh, yeah, Come on, okay. on you, Irons. I mean, that really is. Are we going to get to see the London Stadium? I think we stadium. are going to see the London Stadium at some point. My geography is not the greatest, Fuzzy. but it, it's going to be somewhere, maybe over here somewhere. We'll find it a little bit That's going to be the highlight of your trip. That's a, it's a lovely stadium. Uh, I mean, yeah, it will look beautiful from above. Inside, <laughs> I don't know. But above, yes, it will look lovely. Um, look, let's kick off and, um, and let's just talk about this area in East London and, and the place of where you're from. And, and maybe what it was like growing up in and, and how it's made you the man that you are today. Yeah, man, I actually loved growing up in East London, man. Especially like the estate that, that I grew up on in, in Custom House. There was so many different kinds of people. So a lot of working class British people, a lot of first generation Brits that parents moved over here from like, Africa, the Caribbean, South America, all over Europe. So everyone was different, but in a way, it's almost like all of our differences united us and made me realize that actually like we're all really similar at the same time. And so I loved it. Obviously there's gonna be stuff that's really hard. Um, and that happens when you grow up working class, like violence and trying to look for where the next pound's gonna come and that kind of stuff. But all in all, it was a really close knit community. And I think all the difficult times made us stronger. I guess being up here as well, and I mean, we've quite literally got a 360 view on yeah. East London. Your London Stadium's over there, I can see it emerging. Oh, there, they are. there they are. Will they be safe from relegation? We'll find out. Um, but it, 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 it's nice because it, all of a sudden you get a sense for, for the community in a way yeah. when you're up here, don't you? 100%. I think when you're like living life every single day going about your business, you don't really get the chance to like step outside of that and have like this panoramic view of um, the beauty of what we're a part of, the beauty of community, the beauty of the city, how there's what, it's about 8 million people in London now. And I don't know, I just think it's a beautiful thing, man. And there's not a city like it, man. And that plays, that community plays a really important part in your music, doesn't it? It's almost like the DNA of it. Yeah, well, like my parents are from Ghana and my mum always used to say to me, it takes a village to raise a child. And I love that saying because we can't do life alone. We need like the education um, system. We need like police, we need ambulances. We need our next door neighbors. We need mm. shopkeepers, we need bus drivers. We need everyone mm. to create this safe environment for people to thrive in. So the community means everything to me, man. Absolutely. And I mean, not more well represented than your latest record, The Village is on Fire. The Village is on Fire. Yeah, man. coming in May, right? It's coming in May. Yeah. Spent a, a lot of uh, time in the studio working hard on it and the beautiful thing about the record is for me it sounds like London and I've drawn from not just like my experience of the stuff that I faced here but also the stuff that I talk to my friends about man um, so yeah I'm really excited about it. When you first started getting into rapping what what were your understandings of, of how to be a rapper and what to talk about first off compared to where you are now? 
Yeah, no, that's a good question. I think because I watched a lot of TV, it was mainly what I saw in America. And I used to think that to be like a credible rapper, you had to have like the big cars, like <laughs> brand money in the yeah, music yeah. video. Now look at you, chase. you run the cable car, man. <laughs> <laughs> I know, man. Um, but I, then I started to find out about artists like from London, so like Kano and Dizzy Rascal and these kind of people. And they were rapping at a high level, but talking about the city that I am from. You know, talking about a flipping 241 bus or boat E3 or whatever. And I'm like, yeah, this is my area. And so I just started to write about my life, um, my context, and it was authentic to me. And, and it just went from there, really, and people enjoyed it. Was that a realization of how you could connect and impact with people, like a light bulb moment in a way? I think so. I think, I don't know. I just have this belief that everyone's got something that they can be passionate about, something that they can contribute to the world and communicate. And with me, I'm not even that good at talking, doing interviews and that kind of stuff, but when it comes to like writing lyrics and being in the studio, that's how I use my voice to make my community a better place, man. How does that feel when you're in that moment and you're in the studio? It's cathartic, first of yeah. all, because you're processing everything that you face in life, the good times and the tough times. Um, but if I'm honest, you don't really understand like, how well it connects until you get on tour and you meet people and they're like, oh, this song really helped me through a difficult time or this song really helped me through my anxiety and stuff and then you're like okay there's actually a lot of power in this music and what we do so it feels special does that come with its own like anxieties in a way because you write this <laughs> stuff you feel good you're like wow i've written this amazing song you put it out there but you never really get to know yeah really how it connects until you know a few months later yeah or is it or is it really not about that i think it can be about that and i've definitely struggled with it and you know the age of social media and worrying what everyone thinks that all plays into it but you know what really helped kind of combat that is just speaking to real people like in the community so getting out on the streets having a conversation with my corner shop guy do you know what i'm saying having a conversation in the chip shop or or whatever and just it just helps me realize that you know what man to man like woman to man whatever it is people really connect with this stuff man and have i don't have to think about how they receive it but just do me as, uh, as your corner shop guy, your fish and chip <laughs> guy made the record? My fish and chip guy ain't, ain't listened to the record yet. My corner shop guy is very, very uh, supportive <laughs> of my music. But I don't know if my music is his thing. Ah, right, <laughs> no, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, fine. You can't be everyone's taste, <laughs> you know what I mean? As long as you're buying, then that's all that really matters. <laughs> yeah. yeah, totally. I mean, like, if you look around us now, we've got pretty much every stretch of East London you, you can imagine here. And, and I think being up here is yeah, an amazing gig. That's yeah. the dream. For me to play the O2 Arena. Look at it. It's stunning back there, isn't it? That's pretty crazy that there's not, if you're in an aeroplane, you can see like kind of like an aerial view of this, but it don't get better than this, man. This is quite a sick view of London, isn't it? It's an absolutely phenomenal view of London. I mean, what are some of the venues that you've played so far? Uh, done. To be fair, I have done the O2 Arena as a support act. Yeah. Um, I've done Wembley, done the O2 Indigo, which is a smaller venue within the O2 Arena. I've done Shepherd's Bush. I've been going a long time, man. <laughs> is, is, is the goal to get the music to as many people as possible then? Is, is that kind of what drives you? I used to think that mm. because I guess that's the definition of success if millions of people listen to your stuff. But now I actually think it's not really about the numbers, but it's just about doing the best that I can with the ability that I have. And if it means that five people love it, then that's six, I did my best. Mm. If it means that 50,000 people love it, then that's also amazing. But I think when you focus on the numbers too much, it's just a lot of pressure. I just try and focus on the art and being the best rapper I can be. That's quite a big learning curve, I think, when you're growing up in any respect, actually. And it's kind of similar to what we're doing here on the cable car. Like, perspective is everything. Yeah. You know, when you're down on the floor, you kind of, you're tunnel vision, aren't yeah. you? You can't, you can't see, especially here in London, you've got the tall buildings, whatever. You're just going down Busy. your street, yeah. getting to where you need to go, trying to survive or whatever. Mm. And then when you're up here, you're above everything, all of a sudden clarity and... Yeah, you are right, man. I, I completely agree with that. And this is on the cable car. It's nothing that I would normally consider because normally I'm just like, get in my car, get to where I'm going, get on a bus if I have to, get to where I'm going. But you're right, man. Sometimes it's good to do stuff like this, take time out. And you're going to be on tour next time. And you're going to be like, oh, so we'll get you a car up to Birmingham. No, no, yeah. I'm taking the cable, cable car. Then I'm getting the car to Birmingham. <laughs> Um, what about some of the tracks on your album then? What, what are some of the standouts? Because we've got Traffic, haven't we? Yeah, so Traffic is one of my favourites. Um, obviously there's a lot of traffic in London. Yeah. It's not on a cable not car. Not a cable car, yeah. <laughs> but normally, and that, that song's really about education and aspiration. So I kind of talk about how in school, I got taught how to use like a protractor and a compass mm. extensively. 
and obviously there are a lot of people that probably use those tools in their day-to-day -day life but the majority of people that i speak to i don't know man have you used a protractor since well, no i've one? never used one no but i'm saying but i don't think many people use one yeah but this is my point and i'm like i do need to know about interest rates and i do need to yeah. know about how to save and i do need to know about how to get on the property ladder and can we get to a point where what we're teaching in schools is something that is a bit more relevant and applicable to the everyday person's life, you know? I've never used Pythagoras. <laughs> once. Libra, well, I can't remember what it is. No, I don't. Algebra? It sounds fancy. No, I don't think it's algebra. It's something like sine, cos, and tan. Um, oh, yeah, I remember that. Do you know what I mean? used to come up on the calculator. <laughs> yeah. Do you remember? Yeah, yeah, I do remember that. It used to come up on the calc. But I'm not saying that stuff's bad, but it's just, can we get a bit more balance? And, 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 more and, 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 and actually, creatively, creatively speaking as well, you know, you managed to find your way into music, but you know, I bet there are countless kids out there now at these schools all around this area yeah. who would do anything to get into the position that you're in, but maybe don't have the vision or the understanding of how to get there yeah. or the opportunity. Yeah, I think opportunity is a big one. In terms of getting it done yourself, it's just asking yourself, like I said, what's the best that I can do within the environment that I'm in? And then I think it's on us as a community to try and provide as much opportunity for young people as we possibly can, and also as many access points as possible. So, you know, I love music, but in school, during my music sessions, we never once looked at rap, for example. Yeah, of course. But my hope would be that, as well as classical music and all the different instruments that we learn to play, we delve into different genres, so a kid sitting on a council estate in his bedroom thinking ah oh, there's nothing really for me at school can think actually that's what i can latch on to you know um but i think it's moving in a good direction i'm still waiting for someone to pull out the recorder <laughs> on a rap record mate i was so bad at the recording <laughs> so bad i even i played the viola for a couple of years as well man. so you were bad at the record so you're like oh, i know what i do i whip out the viola yeah but everyone else like they laugh at me because they're like oh viola it's can like you still a fake violin no i can't play it man oh, I, can't okay. play it. I was a clarinet guy I didn't go it's well. just the moment where you pull out a viola and give it to me. And give it to play. <laughs> <laughs> no, not quite that. We will a little bit later on. You play any instruments? Yeah. Uh, well, yeah, I play the drums. Oh, I'm, a, I'm a rhythm guy. Okay, cool. Yeah, I'm a rhythm you look guy. pretty cool to me, bro. Thanks, Thanks, bro. I appreciate <laughs> that. Um, no, it's nice though. I think I think kids need to be encouraged to, to go down those paths, and because not not everyone is a nine to five, and not everyone is a desk job. That's it, people man. people need to at least have the opportunity yeah, to be able to get there. And you, you know, you've done a lot of campaigning. You, you, you know, you stood up for really what you believe in, not just in the music, but you've, you've put that energy into loads of other different creative outlets. I guess yeah. music was the kind of gateway for you to, you know, explore the documentaries, explore the campaigning, and explore everything else that you do. Yeah, the writing. music was a way for me to use my voice and get my foot in the door, and that's obviously opened up other opportunities to use my voice for good, whether it's a, a documentary on how young people can find pathways into work, whether it's me, you know, being an ambassador for a charity to try and help combat youth violence in the capital. Music's just a way for me to talk about these issues on a broader scale. Mm. What, 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 where do you feel like you've had the, the most impact or the most success for yourself, do you think? Probably talking to young people, really. I think music's great, it's what they can enjoy, but when I get in front of them on a tour or when I'm doing a schools workshop, I do a lot of schools workshop in the city as well, I think it's just having conversations and saying, you know what? There's obviously a lot of madness around us. It's very difficult times, mm. but you've got something to live for. You've got something to contribute to society and you can make the world you live in a better place and you can do some good stuff for yourself as well. And I think when you say that to a young person and you see their eyes light up and they think, oh yeah, I can do something. For me, that means way more than selling a million records or whatever yeah, it is. Yeah, 100%. Not that I've sold a million records. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe in the future, who knows, who knows. Uh, Michaela Cole. Yes. Your cousin, right? My cousin. Your yeah. cousin, Michaela Cole, and also featuring on the record? So she's on the first single yeah. of the new album, Bridges and Road, which is actually the name of the road that I grew up on in Custom House. So it's quite a cool link. Where um, we're heading back to now. Yeah, well, we've just been. Just been. Custom House is over here. I should. Yeah, so I lived somewhere over there. And it's still there. Oh, yeah, I can see it. So just through the gap in the Your house? Neighbors. Yeah, that's literally top floor. Yeah. Of this flats in between those two buildings is where I used to live. That's Bridges and Road. Um, nice. Great times, man. But yeah, Michaela's great. Um, obviously, grew up together, and she's doing mm. incredible things. And she's also a, a Londoner, you know. So you, so you and Michaela would have spent a lot of time in that flat and growing yeah, up man. together and larking about, messing about, yeah. Hundred percent, man. And I think 
to that song, I got attacked um, in South East London. Mm. And so I decided to write about you know, how it made me feel and how we can encourage people to make better decisions with their actions. And that spoke to Michaela a lot and that's why she jumped in the track. But yeah, man, it's an amazing song. And we've got a lot of good memories, man. As good. well as there's been challenging times, we've got a lot of good memories from East London. Of course, yeah. It's a beautiful place and a very, uh, a place that thrives a lot as well. And loads of creativity out of here too. Yeah, it's, it's pretty nice. It's brilliant. And then in terms of, uh, in terms of the football team then, West Ham, come on, man. Like, you've, got, you've got to be worried. <laughs> Mate, be positive. You know who else is, <laughs> you know who else is from Customers? Danny Dyer. We sit together at West Ham quite a lot. Yeah. And I'm worried, but I think we've got enough quality in the team to stay up. That's my number one priority. Second priority is to keep Declan Rice. Hopefully he doesn't he doesn't go elsewhere, but it's not looking good. But um mate, my friend, my best mate Joe Willison grew up in Forest Gate, he played for West Ham as a schoolboy. Mm. I actually grew up supporting Manchester United. Mm. Went to Upton Park for the first time, fell in love straight away and supported them ever since. Did that kind of show you the, the real like community spirit of East London and how deep it goes? Yeah. It's such really heartbeat, isn't it? 100%. I think people underestimate football and sport in general. It's not just 11 players kicking the ball around the pitch. It's the fans that go to the games, adults, kids. It's the community, it's the local shopkeepers. And yeah, when I went to Upton Park for the first time, it just made me realise this is sick. I want to be a part of this. Yeah. Were you a baller? I was a bit lazy, but I would like to think that um, you know, I've got a bit about yeah, me. Yeah, yeah. I'm not going to stand there and say um, I was the best or I had trials and then I got a knee injury. A lot of people <laughs> like that one, but yeah, I think I was all right. <laughs> Were you? Uh, yeah, I mean, I can play. I can play. Had like, trials, got a knee injury. No, no, no. no, no, no. <laughs> we, weren't, we weren't trials or anything yeah. like that, so uh, we, yeah. we were chill. Um, so we're going we're gonna to have a little think about maybe just what we're surrounded by right now, up at the highest point right now is the cable car. We literally pass over it. Um, about no, what's around really us, we and, yeah, we're 90 metres above the Thames right now. 90 metres. 90 metres. It's not far off this that they do Olympic diving. <laughs> That's nuts. That's right. Really, really high. Maybe we could put together, like, I don't know, maybe we, maybe like a little extended cut for the record or something like that up here on the cable car. Oh, this is yeah. why you got me here. You're trying, to, you're, trying to, you're trying to sneak your way into my record, are you? You know what? I've never featured on an album before. I haven't been able Here's to drum. We're working on a deluxe Here's album at the moment. Well, that's what I'm <laughs> saying. We could put something together right here, right now. Oh, so maybe, maybe if I maybe if I fire some some of the finest IFS cable car facts at you. All right, cool. You're putting me to the test and, now. Uh, and maybe we can we can run a few run a few lines and, and see what we can put together. And then when we stop, we get straight to the studio and, and put it down on wax. We, yeah? we are laying it down. <laughs> Each cabin can lift 750 kilograms of passengers. Kilograms. I'm just here on a cable car with my fam. Each one lifts 700 kilograms. It's cold. 10 out of 10? Yeah, it's a warm up. It's a warm up. <laughs> I'm not giving you 10 out of 10. <laughs> We've got more to go. I don't know what's in the, in the locker yet. All right. The cable car can move up to 5,000 people per hour. That's the same as nearly 60 double decker buses. That, that rolls off the tongue, that's double decker buses. This cable car makes me feel sweet, not sour. And it can take about 60, no, 50,000, 5,000 people per hour. There you go, you're getting involved now as well, man. Next time, can you get the worst, the worst right now? <laughs> I'll put you on the spot. I'm going to be honest, I wasn't expecting you to throw to me. I wasn't ready for that. Mate, this was a collaboration. Man. No, I know. That's just why, I don't know. I it's just building confidence. Right, keep I mean, going. Okay, we're getting okay. warm, we're getting warm. All right, here we go. Operating speed, 14 mile per hour. Is that it? Yeah, it's just a short okay. little punchy one. Um, do you want more? Nah, 40 miles per hour. Where can I go without one? <laughs> so I'm a good boy. Don't do GBH. This goes about 40 miles. MPH. Oh, nice. A little, little flip. That wasn't that great. That, that was okay, though. Mate, I hope my manager and my fans ain't watching this. They're going to be thinking, <laughs> I'm, def I'm definitely not buying his new album. <laughs> <laughs> Mate, you're, you're, you're doing way better than anyone else could. Yeah, I can, I can feed you a longer one here. Line length and height. One, kilo one kilometre long, 90 metres above the River Thames at its highest elevation. I could go on this cable car again and again and again, and we're about 90 metres above the River Thames. Thames, Thames. It's just too easy for you now at this point. <laughs> you being nice to me. You really like it? I mean, yeah, it's all right, man. It's not bad. I don't know. I, mean, <laughs> I, don't, know if I, I don't know if I play it on my radio. <laughs> All, all, all great, all great songs have got to come from just a little bit of epiphany. Do you know yeah, what I mean? and sometimes this might not make it on the final cut. We just take a bit of inspiration mm. from what we've done today. 
get to the studio and perfect it. Because you know? this is the thing about creativity, right? Being an artist, lots of people are just kind of fed the the results of everything. They oh, just yeah. expect you to like bang deliver it there and then, don't they? But there's a lot of process that goes into these types of things. Hundred percent. And I think a lot of us have to put hard work into what we do. And if it looks easy, mm. that's probably a testament to how hard you work. So, for example. You're just asking me these questions. Yeah. You probably work really hard at that craft. If I tried to do what you do, I'd be like muddling my words up, getting my questions all over the gap and that kind of stuff. But because the work's got into it, it makes it look easy, man. And yeah, I guess I'm meant to be paying you the compliments. No, no, you're doing all right. You're doing all right. <laughs> <laughs> nice. um, well, one maybe just one final before we finish our trip. Mm. Uh, as we kind of look over and we have the nice view here. What what parts of, of East London and and this area really stand out to you as, as like big memories? Excel for sure, because mm. when it got built, there was loads of like cool space around it, so we always used to go hang out there quite a bit. Obviously, Brisbane Road, where I grew up, yeah. um, lovely council estate community, a lot of love on that estate. O2 Arena, Upton Park, I could go on and on and on and on. Yeah, dude, tell us, tell us, tell us. Yeah. All right, dude, well, look, legend, thank you so much for hanging out today. Really appreciate your time. Thank you, man. Looking forward to linking up on the record real time soon. Yeah, actually, catch, me do the, that, yeah. Yeah, catch me on the darks. Ah, cool. That's how we do it. Guys, thank you so much for watching. Really appreciate the time. A little round of applause for Governor B, please. Thank you. Thank Woo! you. Thank you. Woo! We'll see you real soon. We'll be back once again riding the IFS cable car. Don't forget, you guys can ride it at any point, at any time, if you'd like to tra travel from North Greenwich Pier all the way over to Royal Docks or the other way around. Thank you for hanging out. We'll see you soon. Can we go around again? Yeah. <laughs>